How's it going guys, Chris here with some more Battlefield content for you today and in this video we're going to be taking a look back at some of the franchise's light machine guns, picking out a few of my favourites along the way. The light machine guns, or LMGs, are typically those big bulky beasts for the support class. They're generally less manoeuvrable weapons but they usually have a lot more ammo and firepower to compensate, often fitting into those passive aggressive playstyles quite nicely. But despite being weapons better suited for defensive roles and for bunkering down with those deployed bipods, there's still a fairly wide variety of LMGs to pick from over the series, all having their own characteristics and stats to set themselves apart from one another. This time we're going to be taking a look back at my top 10 LMGs over the franchise so far. They're the ones I'd consider to be some of the best, but do remember that these videos are just for a bit of fun, obviously it's just all based on opinion. Different guns cater to different playstyles, and they're all pretty effective in their own specific ways, so do let me know down below in the comments which Battlefield LMGs are your favourites and which ones you tend to like using over the others. So without further ado, let's get on with the list. In 10th place we're heading over to Battlefield 5 and picking up that Japanese Type 97, technically a heavy tank machine gun but still classified as an LMG in the game. The Type 97 came into Battlefield 5 during that Pacific content drop and ended up being a surprisingly good weapon. It's got quite a lot in common with the Bren gun statistically, but in a way it's actually a better version of it, being a little bit less reliable when it comes to how it handles ammunition, but in exchange for it being a bit more accurate and killing quicker. It's got slower reload speeds, taking an extra second to perform a tactical mag swap, and you've also got to give up 5 rounds per magazine too, with the gun only having a total of 25 shots. But this is all in exchange for a slightly quicker fire rate, making it feel just that bit more aggressive and effective at putting people down. Plus it's also got a better recoil pattern across the board, with the Type 97 actually having the least amount of horizontal recoil in the whole class, pretty much making it the most accurate light machine gun. This means that the weapon can still be really precise and deadly with or without that built-in bipod being deployed, and although you might have to reload a little bit more, taking slightly longer to do, it can still definitely seem like a decent trade-off, often allowing the Type 97 to generally perform better in a lot of gunfights. Up next in the list is the L86A2, which featured in Battlefields 3 and 4. Probably one of the more unique LMGs in those games, kind of feeling like a bit of a hybrid weapon, with it having quite a lot in common with the game's assault rifles. The L86 uses box magazines and has a lower ammo capacity to a lot of its LMG counterparts, though because it shares quite a few similar characteristics to the assault rifles, this can often make it a fairly good choice for aggressive players who still want to play as support. It did change a little bit over the two games, having bigger magazines and a slightly more competitive fire rate in Battlefield 3, but being a more accurate weapon with better recoil and spread stats when it came back in Battlefield 4. Either way though, it was still one of the better light machine guns in both games, being able to compete with some of the quicker shooting weapons in closer proximities, whilst also having a lot of usability over those mid to long distances too, having above average kill times in both games with a decent level of precision. Especially in Battlefield 4 where it had some really nice horizontal values, preventing the gun from drifting off and losing control while you fired away. An all around top choice to pick. Coming in at number 8 is the Shosho being a really powerful but slow shooting gun in both Battlefields 1 and 5. It was definitely a better weapon when we got to use it the first time around in BF1, pretty much having superior stats across the board compared to the Battlefield 5 version, and one of the things that made the Shosho such an interesting gun to use was the fact that it often felt like a bit of a DMR style weapon, retaining a lot of its stopping power over distance whilst having a fairly low first shot recoil multiplier, making it easier to stay on target as you tap the trigger to fire off individual shots one at a time letting the gun deal with people further away a little bit easier. Obviously this gun's got its problems, being far from perfect, it only holds a measly 20 rounds at a time, and to address the elephant in the room, it fires at one of the slowest speeds of all the LMGs in the entire series, so if you miss a couple of shots in a gunfight, it's often going to be lights out for you, adding extra pressure to land those shots on target. With that said, those stronger bullets are going to do a lot more damage, meaning you won't need to land quite as many as normal to put the other guy down making up for that loss of speed, whilst also giving the Shosho some really nice kill times over most distances. Not a gun for everyone, but still definitely one of my favourites, sometimes being a risky choice that rewards you for playing well. Staying in Battlefield 1 for the time being, with our next gun in the list, the BAR-1918, one of the most aggressive LMGs in that game for pushing forwards and advancing through enemy territory. Before any of the DLC weapons came out, the BAR was pretty much the king when it came to power and speed, essentially acting like a stronger version of the SMGs, firing at one of the quickest rates in the game whilst also killing in less bullets due to it using a more powerful cartridge. 
This gave the gun some truly relentless kill times within short to medium distances, only really being held back by its small 20 round magazine capacity, which was also offset by it having some fairly snappy reload speeds, making it an all around great weapon for offensive play. Recoil wasn't exactly fantastic, limiting you to shorter distances and forcing you to burst fire whenever you wanted to take on anyone further away, but providing you played to the BAR strengths, it was still one of the best guns for ripping through enemies up close, having a decent power output over all ranges, along with that nippy fire rate. Over time, faster firing guns got added to Battlefield 1 and a lot of people put the BAR on the shelf, switching to those instead. But even to this day, it's still arguably one of the better LMGs in the game, dealing more damage than most of the others beyond close range, whilst also having a more reliable recoil pattern, lower spread stats and tighter hip fire, still giving the gun a lot of worth within close quarters. Next up in 6th place is the AWS. Not the AWS bolt action rifle that appeared in Hardline, but the AWS light machine gun that came along in Battlefield 4's Naval Strike expansion. This gun sort of functioned a bit like BF4's version of Battlefield 3's MG36, with both being some of the quickest shooting LMGs out of the games, and both using double drum magazines, translating over to faster reloads on the go. Probably the most noticeable difference though, is the fact that the AWS can hold up to a total of 100 rounds, which is a hell of a lot of bullets for a magazine fed weapon, putting it on par with a lot of the belt fed LMGs which generally take a lot longer to reload, making the AWS more reliable in comparison. But putting ammo capacity aside, the gun's also got a pretty decent set of stats across the board, regarding fire rate, kill times and accuracy, not really putting a foot wrong in any specific area. It's not the deadliest light machine gun, nor is it the most accurate, but it still retains a fairly well rounded balance overall. I guess you could say the weakest aspect of the AWS is the weapon's bullet speed, and the fact that it doesn't have a bipod, perhaps limiting effectiveness over longer sight lines. But apart from that, it's generally a really solid pick that you can't go wrong with, having loads of ammo and fairly short kill times, letting you mow through multiple players really easily with that nippy rate of fire. Right in the middle of the list is Battlefield 5's paratrooper rifle, the FG-42, another pretty merciless gun to use within closer proximities. In a way, the FG-42's role felt kinda similar to Battlefield 1's BAR 1918, in the sense that it was a really deadly gun to use within close to medium ranges, yet only had a 20 round capacity, making it a somewhat risky thing to be using within those sorts of ranges. But because the FG-42's reloads were just so bloody quick, taking around about 2 seconds to perform if there were bullets left over in the mag, this favoured players that have gotten into the habit of reloading after every kill or so, making those little magazines less of an issue. Accuracy wasn't too bad as a whole, providing you use the gun within those shorter ranges where it excelled the most, and it could be made even more controllable through specialisations, lowering recoil and tightening hip fire spread to complement its use here too. Compared to a lot of other LMGs in this list, the FG42 probably isn't the best for longer range battles, performing okay over medium ranges if you learn to burst fire at the right moments, but doing a lot better when you've gained a bit of ground on your targets first, potentially making it one of the deadliest weapons in the game in a 1v1 gunfight up close. Our next weapon is pretty much the opposite in style to the last, being a much more defensive option that performs much better over mid to long ranges, the M1917MG from Battlefield 1. Now this is easily one of the most overlooked LMGs in the series, that might not sound like it's got a really appetising set of stats, only having that sluggish 450 RPM fire rate and some of the slowest kill times in the game, making it look like a bit of a rubbish gun on paper. But it's all the other factors that let the M1917 shine through, to make it arguably one of the best of the whole lot. This gun was designed with defensive play styles in mind, and where it might struggle to compete with a player wielding a close range bullet hose, it'll completely decimate targets over medium to long distances instead, due to it practically being a laser beam when you've got that bipod set up allowing you to pretty much paint over your enemies, having barely any recoil or spread to speak of. You've got 250 rounds per reload, plenty to keep you going on and on and on for bloody ages without the worry of running out in the middle of battle, and because the recoil is just so easy to control when you keep the trigger pulled down, a lot of the time you don't even need to use that bipod to stay accurate, providing you stand still, making the gun extremely effective beyond close ranges, cutting down kill times quite a lot due to more bullets landing where they should be. In third place is the M240B from Battlefields 3 and 4, one of the hardest LMGs to control in the games, but if you learn to tame the beast and master that recoil, perhaps with a little help from some of its attachments, it's easily one of the most brutal weapons of the lot. The M240B shares the same high damage model with the M60, 
meaning its bullets are going to pack more of a punch and you won't need to land as many of them to put your enemies down on the floor. The M60 is well known for being a slow shooting heavy damage dealing monster, but the M240B is an even nastier monster with quicker kill times, shooting at a much more appealing rate of 650 RPM, a fair bit faster than the M60. Still fairly steady, not exactly speedy, but when you take into account that the weapon's going to be dishing out more damage than average, this extra power more than compensates for the gun having that bog standard fire rate, actually giving it some of the quickest kill times in both games, over all classes. The biggest negative by far is the recoil, that might seem a bit too much to handle for some players, having strong values for both its vertical and horizontal axis, generally making it bounce around quite a lot. But if you can deal with its recoil pattern and make good use of that bipod, you've potentially got one of the deadliest guns in the series, with loads of really powerful bullets in that 100 round belt. Our second place slot goes to the Lewis gun, which was a pretty good weapon in Battlefield 5, but probably an even better weapon in Battlefield 1, being one of my favourite guns in that game. It might seem like a bit of a surprise to a lot of you guys seeing this thing so high up on the list, because a lot of people generally pass the Lewis gun off and ignore it, being a starter weapon that can be used very early on. It might not exactly be the most popular light machine gun in this video, but it's definitely one of the best balanced, essentially being a great option if you just want a good, versatile performer. It doesn't really have any strong weaknesses. In Battlefield 1 and 5, the Lewis gun sort of sits somewhere in the middle regarding its fire rate and overall deadliness. It's not going to be quite as ferocious as some of the other options, but it's still powerful enough to take on other players head on, whilst having a fairly controllable recoil pattern, allowing the gun to compete with its targets well enough over a variety of different ranges. It uses a pretty beefy magazine, holding 47 rounds, or more depending on the variant, and these head magazines can be reloaded in just a few seconds, which for an LMG holding all that ammo is generally quite quick. Combine all these factors together, and you've got a really nice well-rounded package. It can be effective over practically any range and in any situation. So if you're willing to sacrifice a bit of firepower for a more adaptable weapon overall, then the Lewis gun's definitely a good choice, for both offensive and defensive playstyles alike. So taking our number one spot, it's probably one of the most ruthless light machine guns in the entire series, the rapid firing M249 Saw, a gun that a lot of Battlefield fans will have gotten very familiar with over the years. If you play a Battlefield game in a modern setting, then this weapon's going to be in it, in some form or another. But it wasn't until Bad Company 2 when the M249 really started to prove itself as a bullet spewing monster, as from that point onwards, its fire rate was ramped up and it'd go on to be one of the most deadliest weapons of the lot, going from Bad Company 2 to Battlefields 3 and 4. Having a 100 to 200 round belt and the ability to turn your opponents into bolognese, the M249 could not only compete with all the other fast firing guns within close to medium ranges, but it could also keep on going to take on multiple players one after the other, making it a less risky weapon to use for rushing objectives and moving through enemy dense areas. Recall was a tad higher than its counterpart, making it, albeit, less useful over longer distances, unless of course you have that bipod attached, which could make it far more effective over all ranges. But even still, considering it had so much firepower, you could still retain a decent level of accuracy and control nevertheless, especially when using tap firing techniques for engaging targets further away. So those are a few of my favourite LMGs in the Battlefield series, but do let me know which ones you like the most down below in the comments. Subscribe and check out my channel to see loads more videos on Battlefields and other games, and give me a big fat thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching folks, and I'll be seeing you in the next episode.